Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this final matchup of Windmill 2019, the 15th edition. We're here for the mixed final of Krut, the two-time reigning champions, the young kids from the Netherlands versus the French national team. I'm Ravi Vasudevan, joined here by Sarah Sparks. Sarah, how are you feeling today on this final matchup? I am very excited to see Krut take it up against France. We haven't seen them play against each other in the Swiss draw or in the quarters. And we have a bit of inside information as France have played against several members from this current team of the under 24 Dutch mixed squad. And France taking two wins there. So France looking like the favorites going into this game. But Indeed, a lot of their Dutch friends and family, of course, joining in. And of course, the 1,500 players from all the other 80 teams taking their seats in the stadium. We've had two great finals so far. Great Britain taking the men's final and Germany women taking the women's final. Who's going to win this last one? Again, Krut here, the team in maroon, and France, the team in white. We'll be right with you shortly to start things off. Just about ready to go here to start things off. It looks to me like France is looking for a disc to pull as Krutz bring out their offensive line. Now you talked about the Dutch U24 team, which Krutz is a big core of, but there are some few differences here. Um, which would you say is the stronger side if you were to compare that Dutch U24 national team to this Krutz side where they've added a few over 24 players to their side? Of course, the Krutz have Syzygy. Having played Worlds together in 2018, been playing for years together, know each other like the back of their hands. So I do think bit for tit for tat, can't really compare the two. Um, France, on the other hand, we haven't seen much of them on streams, but they've had some great successes in the run up to Euros. And can't wait to see how they come out on defense at this first point. Coming out, it looks like a strict person person defense as Walt Janssen puts up a big disc for Leninga, can she get there? No, it's overshot, and even the huge efforts of Flor Collards could not get the disc for them as France get their first chance at a break in this game. Wind has very much picked up in this game. Not sure if you've been following us all day, make comparison with the Open Final and the Women's Final. Wind really picking up. The wind is a upwind, downwind, so France are looking to go for the upwind break. Kyle Ancelin to start things off to Vincent Lapagnol. Lapagnol marked by Janssen. Looking for a reset now. Lots of pressure by Krut. Finds Ancelin in the middle. Roble puts it up big. And now there's going to be a battle. Lots of bodies under it. And Vincent Lapagnol gets it down. Is he in the end zone? He is. That's a goal for France. Starting things off with a break. Exciting stuff there. Can't, can't believe that we have Walt Janssen under the disc and still doesn't manage to read the play so accurately. I think he's going to want that disc back. Walt Janssen, known as the Skywalker, usually known for ruling the skies. Vincent Lepagnolo, player for Chuck, is one player like that as well, getting the better of him on this matchup, but that's a matchup I'd like to see over and over again this game. So here we're going to see this again on the replay. Not even in power position, just going for the throw statically. And several bodies from Krut under the disc, but French player, they're just boxing out and just managing to toe in the line on the end zone. So a break to start from France, make it 
Good stuff from the French. That was Sullivan Robley throwing the disc. That's a chalk to chalk connection for the French. A lot of this French team made up of chalk players on the men's side, Yaka players on the women's side, and players from Sesky Distus, the club team from Strasbourg. They, those are basically the mixed uh, male and female champion teams for the French. All of them very well represented here. As now, Kruitz look to start things off again. Lako van der Weyden with the disc in the middle, marked by Pierre Grau. Gets it to Korlarts, first time we've seen her touch the disc so far. Wind really picking up here, but have to work it upwind. Over to Blasman, a new addition to Kruitz this year. That pops over Minard, but Bohm collects it easily. Von der Weyden gets it to Janssen, a little high. She's able to hold on to it. Kruitz discs not exactly staying as low as they would like them, but so far they're able to bail, cutters they're able to bail out their throws. Walt Janssen now gets it to Bohm. Bohm looks off Blossman. Lots of pressure here from the French. They're not giving anything up easy with both the French defense and the wind trying to fight against this Kruitz attacking side. Jana Janssen now gets it up line to her brother Walt Janssen. Walt Janssen with a big blade. Just too short for Blossman and the France are going to get another shot at a second break here in this game. It works out actually quite well. Like you said, Ravi, some of the discs popping up a bit more than they intended. However, you've got people like Walt Janssen, you also have Niels Boom, even Tom Blossman, who is only 16, still got way to grow. Tall figures he can get under that disc, but Kruitz's play is dynamic. They're going to go for those blade shots, and in the wind, that's just not always going to work. Now we see Pierre Grau here, the boy from Grenoble, getting things off. Back to Sullivan Robley, who had the big throw on the last point. Lacro trying to stop Grau, but Grau gets it into the centering space. Dishes it off to Cheminot. Cheminot to Gabriele. Gabriele puts it up big. Floor collapse is under it, but it's going to be the 39 shirt of Elise Becker to get a second break in a row as the French are rolling now, Sarah. That's a really great read there from Becker. Very intimidating, knowing that you have floor coolers on your back, and I just have that feeling she pulled out of that play. Really great read there. Could looking a little bit frazzled. Still seeing a lot of side like cheering, smiles, clapping. They know it's not over yet, but they have to have a little bit more focus when they're going out on offense. We do have the ratio rule B as we see another look at Beck Hare's great catch. The ratio rule B here is in place, and I believe it is Kutz end zone that is deciding the ratio. And I think that Kut opted to go for four women. I talked to Ben Ort, who has sadly tore his ACL earlier this season, so will not be playing with Kut or the Dutch U24 for the rest of the season. And he told me that when they played the French, it was actually the French women that were going deep and winning deep against Kutz women, which is something they're not so used to. And that France is playing four women against them a lot. Very confident Kutz, Kutz women have not been challenged much this tournament. And we will see if that's gonna follow suit here as now Kutz O-line have to get out there a third time. We see for the first time Tiert Ates taking the field and Kut coming out in a split stack, trying to isolate Lola Dam and Walt Janssen on the side. Janssen gets it for the under. He puts it up to Dam. Is it gonna work this time? She reads it and she cannot come down with it. The pressure of Chassigno and Celine just too much. Also for the throw from Walt Janssen, they were so blading really hard for Dam to read. We all know that Dam is fantastic in the air. But also you've got the sun in your view. It's just so tricky. Make those throws a bit more. 90% passes, maybe even 80% passes, but at the moment it's not even 50-50. Gail Ancelon to bring the disc back in. He will be marked by Chirt Ates this time. The question is, can Kruitz defense give some pressure to this French side who's been playing confidently with their deep game even in this win? Looking really good as Gail Ancelon looks for the reset and finds Alexia Chassignot. Chassignot finds Ronan Bichon. This guy's got a gun slinging of a flick and he lets it leash there. Unleash and it will be too short this time as Celine Antoine unable to pick it up. There is a call on the field or maybe an injury stoppage. Yeah, I think, I don't know whether Lola Dam may have actually stood on her foot or just a little bit of crap, but it's been shaken off, so. 
Disc just dying off there. Kretz gets another opportunity. The deep space has been very well respected from France. Only the unders are free right now. Atez gets it to Janssen. Janssen's had a couple throwing errors so far this game. Let's see if he can clean things up. He does. He gets it to Van der Weyden, but almost bobbles it. Just about keeps it. Now to Atez and put look a bit more in flow as Atez looks to launch it for Lauko van der Weyden. Can he track it down? He cannot. And France get another shot. Great bit there from Lauko van der Weyden. We've seen some heroic plays over the weekend from Krutz. Once again, those discs are just dying off at the last moment. These discs have to be released very high so the wind can take it with them into that end zone. It also has to be said, this might be one of the last times we'll see Lako van der Weyden play with Fritz as he is moving down below the equator later on in July. We'll have to see if he'll come back for the UCF maybe later this year, but he's going to want to have a nice victory. Top things off with his favorite club team. Guy Lancelon looks for Ron Bichon, but Lola Dam snags it, and Krutner now off to the races. Van der Weyden finds four coolards on the side. She launches it deep for Dam. A bit of miscommunication and Dam just wasn't ready for a disc into that space, but what a heroic defensive play that she made earlier on. Absolutely, huge defensive play, read that disc so well, got body position in front of the French player, and you just knew as the disc was dying, Lola Dam was gonna get there. But not able to be patient. Just their deep game isn't on right now. I don't know if it's even a sense of patience. It's just that their their hucks are not doing well in this win, and that's the big difference between France and Kurt right now. Both teams doing a good job of put applying pressure and forcing difficult things, but France, on the one hand, deep looks are working, whereas Kurt's are not. We'll see what Alexia Chassigneau does as she walks up, being marked by Anna Minard. Guy Lancelon not able to get free on Chirt Ates as Antoine gets up the line. Antoine finds Ancelon, he's able to hold on to it. And Chirt is calling it down. So good, uh, good spirit there from Ates. Also looks at the sideline, everyone with their fingers up. It was a bit dicey from Ancelon, but does manage to recover it right at the last moment. Great presence of mind there from Ancelon, hold on to that one. As France keep the disc, cheered applying a big mark. Walt Janssen almost getting there on Le Pagnol. We're going to see that matchup again here. Lazarus now throws it directly to Flor Coulart as that throw's not going to work out for the French. Turning into a bit of a sloppy point as Flor Coulart goes long. Lauko puts all of his effort into that run, but it's just too far for Van der Weyden. You can see in Coulart's face, she really did not want the disc at that end zone. Go for a swing dub there, and it bobbing up in the end just gives France perfect power position to score. So do you also respect her decision at that moment. She just wants to get rid of it. That also shows a bit of a lack of confidence that you can't work it in this wind. Both teams lashing it deep a lot. We'll see if either team will opt to try and clean things up as Ancelon starts things for the French. Ronan Bichon with the disc. Gets it over to Antoine. Antoine marked by Coulart. That disc going to be high. We have another battle between Le Pagnol and Janssen. Janssen getting the better of it this time. Atez now after a dish from Minard. Big high disc for Dan, but Lola. But Coulart just could not get under that one. And this is turning into a marathon point here, Sarah. Well, that was also a great read for Saint Jean. Got between Dan and Coulart and managed to bat the disc away. Maybe a little bit nervous. It is windy. You must try and catch your discs at any possible moment. Be shown now with the disc on the sideline. Looking for a deep shot and he finds one that he likes. It's to Le Pagnol and Le Pagnol takes it with authority. That was a difficult disc to read, but Janssen was completely out of position and France go up 3-0. I have to give credit to France. Their upwind throws are so beautiful. They are releasing their throws at ankle height. Some of them even look like they're skimming the ground. With the other regard, Kurtz going for these powerful deep hooks. I think they're a team that they're very used to playing hook and D and knowing they can get these Ds. But at the moment, the defense is just a little bit behind and the forces are just getting broken, opening up the break sides. There we see that beautiful defense from Lola Dam. Here the high disc from Antoine. And Janssen's able to get the D on this one. 
There's a timeout on the field being called, I, I imagine, by foot after you've broken this many times. Right down the field on his bike with a giant box at the front, also known as a box piece. Kirby will be riding from the left side of the field to the right. Your job is to throw your disc not at his head or her head, but into the, uh, the box. If you do that, well, you're going to have to ride. Uh, which I have just heard uh, from one of my contacts will be playing the EUCF as a mixed team this year, so that'll be another challenge for Put later on this season. They went down very big in that game early, and well, bounce in hand block there by Roble. And France got another shot at it. So they went down in that Salis Pills game early, but still managed to come back and win that one. We'll see if they can find the magic again as France are just on the doorstep, almost ready to score and make it 4-0. Antoine now with the disc, she puts up this inside, and that time, Romain Chaminot makes no mistake about it, scores 4-0 for the French. Part of me is now wondering what Hrut could do from a tactical perspective on defense if they have a turnover. So France are very comfortable with the win. They're also very comfortable breaking the force and just placing the disc onto the break side. And it doesn't necessarily mean that there is even a cutter there. They're just trying to open up the space. In my opinion, I would start to think about either a straight up force and not allowing any unders. Or maybe, very controversial, don't see it very often, coming out in a zone, just to see what fronts do. Because the current man-women man, man, uh, man -women marking that we currently have just isn't working. What about on such a short field turnover like that? Do you think even putting a zone there? Because by the time you get it set up, you might be out of position. Very risky move on a short field. Yeah, of course, near the, near the end zone, I wouldn't do that, but maybe if there's been a big hug, for example, from Flint, we've seen it several times, and it's not worked out, that's a really good opportunity to set up a different style of D. We do have to say two teams preparing for different seasons as France are preparing for Gior later this two weeks, just starting later this month. And Krutz, of course, looking to make a run again at the EUCF in the club division. France
France will have a couple strong teams that are looking to take away their title as they were the top ranking European team at the World Ultimate Guts Championships the last time we had European national teams. They came fourth there, beating Great Britain in a bit of an upset in the quarterfinals. Now stacking their mixed team and trying to come with a medal at Worlds next year. There, Steneker puts up a prayer and Lola Dam is not able to come down with that one even a little bit. Completely out positioned by her French defender. I really think the French women are doing a fantastic job shutting down the likes of Dab and Cola. It's, like I said earlier, I don't think the throws are really helping, but the French women are not afraid to get body position, maybe a little bit physical, nothing too bad, and just slams that disc to the floor. Sarah Clev there with the big D as we see Le Pagnol. Now marked by Pluch, as I think this is just the D line. It's come up as Bichon puts up a bomb. Is it going to work? Chirdates gives enough pressure for Bastien Chevalier to go up too early and put will get the disc back. That was great D there from Chirdates. Was looking like it was going to be 5 0, but like you said, just jumped early, forced him to make a decision. But now we'll have the whole field to work with as Cheer finds J.P. Steneker, but Ronan Bichon has something to say about that. That's the kind of play you expect Steneker to make usually. Bichon known for it on the French side, and now Alex Chassignot will basically have a meter to work with to make it 5 0. Selena Scholten, one of the new additions to Crut on the mark now, as Bichon doesn't like his around option, but puts it just up to the cone for Vincent Le Pagnol, who just outruns Marc Kluch there for a very easy end zone offense. 5-0 on the trot for French. I just can't begin to describe how well France are playing. It's just clinical. We've seen very little turnovers. The turnovers that have been generated, though, have been very tight defensive pressures from Krutz. It's not like they're dropping or turfing it or throwing it too high. That's Krutz D. So we do know that Krutz do have the intensity. Let's check out this D from Roman Bichon, first of all, though. What a play from the Frenchman. And here we're going to see, look at that. Marc Pluch just gives the open side under in the end zone. That's the one thing you can't do. I mean, if you get, if you let your man get open on the break side, that's one thing. you got to be close and apply pressure there, but you have to stop an open side straight up run like that, as Le Pagnol is very dangerous and will take it easily if you give it to him. Last time I've seen... So we were talking about last year against Salzbills. They did go down, but I don't believe they were down in this big of a hole. The last time I've seen a crit down in this big of a hole was, I believe, the 2016 EUCF Finals where they played against Reading. It was a very windy game there as well, and just nothing was working for the team. And I do think the wind is playing against Krutz as they don't have those blady options anymore. And France is just seems to be a superior throwing team when there is wind. I think Krutz can match them throw for throw in still conditions. But France showing that they have more of what it takes to throw in these conditions. Lavko van der Weyden now taking it up to the brick mark. Put starting in a vertical stack. Floor goes deep immediately. Lavko does not send it. Instead, he finds Janssen with a big around throw. Janssen looking for options downfield. Kularts is cutting, but he's looking for Lavko. Goes up for Bohm, and it's a tipped away. And Roble eats it up and calls a timeout as the French are in dominant control of this game right now. Crits there looking very frustrated. As well as just some of these miscues, we've had a lot of personal mistakes. Discs bouncing out of hands, misreads. It's really hard to make that switch, but this is a team that's had years of playing high-level ultimate. They have been in these situations before. So it's a case of having a bit of self-belief that it's not over till it's over. We've not even just seen at the women's final, even Germany pulling away from Finland, and Finland managed to get nearly three, three, up, three breaks, I believe, at the end. So it ain't over till it's over. So also a good opportunity, really. France are taking the time out to have a little bit of a celebration, but this is also a prime opportunity for Grutz to talk to each other, say, sort it out, let's just go really hard on D. There you see the coach, Ben, or trying to give his best words, giving 
instilling confidence in this team, knowing we've been here before, we can play against this team, this is our home turf, this is our tournament, let's show them what we can do. Sarah, can you tell us a bit about these two teams and their roads to getting here throughout Swiss draw and bracket play at Windmill this year? Yeah, of course, so like I mentioned earlier, they have not met each other in the Swiss draw. If I start off with Fritz, um, they have had a slightly more exciting road to the final. Uh, very easy wins in pool play. Um, maximum score against them was nine points. In the quarter final, they uh, played against Fog and beat them 12-7. But their semi, very exciting. Commentators on it yesterday. Only two breaks in the entire game, one apiece, and just pulled away for the win on Universe against Shenanigans. If I look at France, once again, pool play, very, very easy, even a 15-nil game. Quarterfinal was against the Flow, 11-6, and the semi was a tight game against Germany, maybe slightly unexpected, but pulled away for the win, 11-9. So France also just looking a bit more dominant than if we even look at the results they've had as we get back in to the play. The wind is picking up even more, but Sullivan Robles does not mind. Finds Antoine for the under. Antoine aggressively faking, finds Grual. Roble on the sideline now. He rifles it into the end zone, and that's going to be a bit too difficult there for the French receiver. Uh, Boehm uh, signaling that there needs to be a new disc thing that got tackled as he w went for the bid, but unfortunately got his knees and his feet on the disc. See here on the replay, just an absolute rifle from Roble and a barrel roll even over the disc, turning it into a tackle. Niels Bohm now with the disc on the sideline, trying to get something going for the split offense. Finds Yanni Janssen, but that one's going to be very far. She saves it for her team. But if that's the type of dump throw they need under this French pressure, it's going to be difficult. The disc is high. Janssen collects. Janssen finds Bohm, as now Kut seem to be in a bit of flow. Kolarts now, back to van der Weyden. Janssen. Finds van der Weyden. There's Kolarts. Can she collect? She cannot. And French will get another chance at a break as Pierre Grau, the man from Grenoble, Club of Monkey, I'm sure lots of his teammates are watching this stream, picks up the disc now. Puts up a big disc for Roble. Janssen's going to be there, though, to eat it up. Janssen finds Bohm. Blasman is open. Is the disc going to be there? Blossman with quite a grab, and Kutz with their best chance to score they've had all game. Now, the young Anna Minard with the disc. Can Kutz finish this point out and make something happen? On the scoreboard, Janssen now finds Minard. Very stagnant stuff from the Kutz stack as she finds Janssen, but it won through D from Antoine as she looks to the crowd for some energy as this French team will not let up, even after heroic plays like the one we saw from Blossman. Pierre Grau now. I believe the fourth time this point, and that disc is just going to be too low for Roble. The wind really picking up, making things a bit sloppy. Ken puts capitalize. Lako van der Weyden fakes the huck to Janssen. Blossman now in the handler space, and a miscommunication between him and van der Weyden will give France another shot. Pierre Grau looks off. Julien Gabriela. Gabriela gets it on the under. A little cheeky throw as Lucy Ruffi with the goal. Six nil for France. I really want to shout out here to Jonna Janssen and Tom Blossman from Krutz. These players are so steady in the handler space, but they're not as well known for these huge grabs. We think about Lola Dam, Flor Clones, going for these monster layouts. But that was a monster layout for Jana Janssen. Also a monster layout from Tom Bossman. If Kutz had scored that point, I really think that would have driven some energy into that game because they both just showed the grit and determination that they needed to continue. But France, just straight away on these miscues from Kutz, pick up the disc and go for a quick turnover. It's just barely, it's so hard to stop. You see it here on the replay, just absolutely heroic, only 16 years old. Just mind baffles to think what they're going to be doing in four or five years' time. 
I do have to say also Selena Antoine with a great D herself. And on the one hand, I agree with you that those heroic plays can energize this team. But on the other hand, it seems to me that those heroic plays are necessary to get any movement going against this stifling French defense in this wind. And it's more of a sign that Kruitz are just being stopped at every which way they turn. As now Atez starts things off with a crit D-line as we see him look off Marcia Colin. Kuman's now with the disc. I don't believe we've seen him yet this game. As Boston de Young, the Flying Dutchman, trying to start things off to Dam. Offense looking much better now from Kruitz. The, the wind is dying down a bit. Perhaps that's helping them. Atez now fakes off Kuman's. Finds Selena Skolten. And that disc is going to be too far for Colin. I believe that's the youngest and oldest woman trying to match up with each other on foot there. As Gael Ancelon, who looks to make it 7-0 here. This is not the kind of game we expected, Sarah. No, absolutely not. It's not ideal also for Kruitz having to put your D-line out there. It was much better offense, but now you're having combinations that you're not normally used to. Le Pagnol now looking for Ancelon on the reset. Finds Ancelot, Chirt stops the swing, but Ancelot is looking for Le Pagnol in the end zone, and that's going to be 7 nothing as Vincent Le Pagnol is owning the deep space with him and Robley both making huge plays. Vincent Le Pagnol makes it 7-0 for France. This Le Pagnol, Janssen, De Jong matchup, just that he cannot be stopped at this moment. He has taken down every single contested disc. We normally look at Kurtz and we think, yeah, they've got it. But France just coming out the blocks, firing. Don't know what they have for breakfast this morning. Don't know what they did in their warm-up, but they need to do this when they're heading to Euros. They are showing Europe, look, we are not to be messed with. We had a great world season. We are going to absolutely smash Euros. That is one question that everybody has here. How good is this French team going to be against the tough opposition they're going to face? You said they had a tough game against Germany. Germany was a team a lot of people were saying was going to be a bit weaker this year. A lot of their classic mixed players deciding not to play national team in this cycle. And they're kind of getting a new team going, but pushing France in that semifinal. We know the likes of GB have a big contingent of Chevron Action Flash players, as well as Bristol, Reading, and Smog players to make an incredible mixed team. The question is, France is showing what they got now, but is it going to work in Hungary? We'll talk about that a little bit later, but right now, we'll see if Quick can find themselves out of this hole. Otherwise, we're going to get an 8-0 first half if France can manage to get another break here. Lauko van der Weyden trading disc with Nena Raus. Finds Walt Janssen to Minard. Minard to Janssen as about 10 passes later, they haven't gotten out of their attacking end zone as Brom Steinhausen makes the first move to get themselves forward. Steinhausen looking for Janssen but does not like that reset. Finds his sister, Jana Janssen, instead. If one Janssen doesn't work, we've always got a second one on this team. Lako van der Weyden now. Fakes the big huck as he's marked by the giant body of Ronan Bichon eventually founds Kolarts on the side space. Kolarts looking for Lako van der Weyden, finds him and gets Bichon out of position. Has a wide open break space, finds Boston uh, Bram Steinhauser. Now van der Weyden goes for a give-go move with Janssen. Blocked by Bichon but is able to get it back on the break side. Janne Janssen now. Gets it to Walt Janssen. Walt Janssen finds Weiner Weiden and they are just about 10 meters away from a score. Flor Kulart with a great grab and she's looking for follow up option. Nothing is there for her yet. Swings it back to Jana Janssen and they've just moved back meters now. Didn't get much centering space. Another disc to Kulart as they're just trading back and forth now. The big blade for Janssen, and he cannot come down with it as Kurt unable to, but there is a call on the play. Yeah, foul call. That blade did not come out how anyone expected. Kurt on the doorstep currently of this end zone line. 
the French defense is just so tight. She hasn't got an option up the line. It's so clogged. A lot of the crew players are starting to swarm around her. That works perfectly for France, as we see here on the replay. That's just a very short blade. But this is going back. It's an uncontested foul. So coming in on zero, Colides will be looking to get it off this line. They have not done that yet. The last dump was to Janssen, and they were just able to get it back up the line again. They have not tried to use the width of the field except with that blade. They need to get a little more conservative here in this wind if they want to move the desk laterally. But Lako van der Beinen gets the first point on the board for Krutz. They will not be in 8-0 first half. It's 7-1 now. And Krutz finally get their D-line out there to start a point on D as I believe that was seven straight breaks as Put started the game on O. And we'll see France's strong O-line for the first time, but whew, that's got to be a breath of fresh air for the young kids from the Netherlands. Yeah, big relief. You do not want to end a mixed final at windmill 8-0. So now time to see France's O-line. We have not seen anything of them yet. We don't really know where they specialize. Last time at uh, G-Spots, they ended up playing in the final against a mixed team based from superstars from Belgium. And they definitely had some troubles with zone at that game. Now, could not normally know to do a zone, but you've got to think it mix it up think of deep different defensive plays at this point so we can stifle france right at this end zone and then they have the opportunity to start clawing some points back in this game i think in the mixed division Hood is very used to just having the athletic dominance over teams so not needing to do as much tactically on defense like you say but in this matchup against a national team this french national team has a lot of players from the men's division a lot of players from the women's division they are not athletically dominant, Kurt Art here, as France are showing them step for step, throw for throw. So Kurt does opt to go for match defense, not trying anything fancy yet. That's going to be a low throw, but it's collected by Paul Bonon. And Sophie Bichon with the disc now. Gets it to Morier. Morier to Ruffy. I believe the disc is going to come back as Pierre-Alexandre Monet gets free, but there was a pick. French ladies are absolutely going to work at this point. A lot of the good, good girls trailing. Very unusual to see this as the disc is checked back in. Bichon now. Gets to Lachi. Morier with the disc. Morier with a big huck for Monet. Can he get there? He can, and that'll be half. 8-1 for the French. Great throw there from Morier to find Monet. Yeah, so France just coming out in a conventional host stack and just swinging the disc, looking comfortable, taking the free options. But like I just said, the French women free all over. We saw blown coverage going deep, but luckily that was picked up by one of the men. So she just turned around and came under and chopped up all the yards. What do you think they're going to be talking about in this halftime as we see Herbie, the mascot of Windmill winds up cycling across the pitch and all the discs are coming from the spectators trying to land in the buckets of There's his bike. One, one game in. Oh, cheeky bounce. Some people from this side having a go. I see a second disc in. To get your disc in, you can win some free VC Look Fly swag. Cheeky hammer from one of our commentators, Stefan, but doesn't quite make it. A rugby ball even trying to get into the basket. So a complete mess on the field. Someone's going to go and clean this up. But sorry, going back to, like I said, Rami, what would you do as Kurt in this situation? But what would you also do in this French time? In the Kurt situation, I think they need to clean up their offense. They need to play a bit different than they're used to. These big blades are not working in this wind. They have to work it around and work with their legs. Remember, though this French team is athletic, they are athletic as well, and they can win not just with their throws, but with their legs. On defense, I do think they're going to need something 
not just match defense. If they play match defense against these French players, that favors them. They're better throwers in this wind, and they have the legs to match up with Krutz, which Krutz isn't used to. We saw it before, the Belgians just completely dismantled France with a zone. That's something they're going to have to try. As France will start this second half on offense, I would be very curious if Chris is going to try and come out with something because that one offensive point we've seen from France was just super, super easy. Working with their women, working with their men, finally the big huck. Just a great team effort from France. And just one final comment with regards to the two teams. If I look at the roster that I currently have, there is a significant difference in numbers, and I'm just starting to wonder whether uh, Chris is showing item. signs of fatigue. We also know that people like Lauke van der Weyden and Jörg Stenico had a few niggles over the weekend, and I think you could even tell when uh, Stenico was on the pitch, there's just a little bit of hesitation, not wanting to go through a hamstring injury. Hood have actually chosen to go quite far away from the field. They just want a bit of peace and quiet just to regain that focus and just find some drive, mainly on offense, to get some more points on the board. Interesting thing to note, I just realized. Before this game started, we had Krutz warming up off the stadium while France was warming up in the stadium. In the women's final, it was the same thing. Finland was warming up off the stadium while Germany warmed up in the stadium. Now, I can understand what Krut and Finland were trying to do there. They're trying to say, let's focus on ourselves. Let's try and get outside this you know, huge crowd and everything. Let's think about what we need to do. But so far, it's been the teams that have warmed up with this energy, with this crowd, that have started both games well early. And I wonder whether it's maybe too much of a shock to your system to warm up outside of this energy and come into it, rather than say, OK, if we're going to have to play in this, let's warm up in this and get mentally prepared for this energy. What do you think about that, Sarah? I kind of agree with you, but in the sense of when you're doing a warm up on the pitch, let's just say, for example, you're doing a leading pass drill and the disc is too far. And even in the warm up, you go for a big layer and you catch it. I saw it happen in the Germany warm up. One of the girls laid out and just missed it, but the crowd still went wild. And sometimes you just need that little bit of energy to prepare you for this game. Um, especially if you're not as familiar, I know Fritz are very familiar with playing in front of crowds, but for example, Blossman for uh, Schultz in this week, maybe one of their first times. So I do have to agree with you, it's not necessarily a bad thing to do your warm up in front of the crowd. So teams take note of that. If you're playing in one of these finals in the future, maybe France, if they make it to that EUC final, keep preparing in front of the crowd. Now, you're pretty familiar with UK Ultimate. I have to ask you, looking at this French team and seeing how they're playing right now, how do you think they'll match up with the incredibly talented, some would say ridiculously talented, uh, GB roster that's coming to Gior in two weeks? Now, like you say, I do know a lot about UK Ultimate, and I didn't know much about this French team going into this game. The French have just showed me that they are super strong. So if I look at the GB team and I look at the French team, I would say on paper, they are evil. We do, uh, the UK team, like you mentioned earlier, have got people from Chevy, the core of the men are from Chevy, and we've also got a lot of women who've been playing together for years. So the question is, if GB can merge these two teams together, so a predominantly open team and some predominantly women's teams to make a great mixed team, I really think it could be anyone's game. I think what works in France's advantage is because they've had such great mixed seasons in the past, and this GB mixed season is completely new. GB mixed that we saw in 2016. I do think that connection, those trainings that they're having, may just give them that top notch. I would not want to put money on it because I really think it could go either way. Another team that will be strong in the mixed division will be Sweden, who have beaten GB at a preparation tournament earlier this year. So Sweden and GB are both in the same pool. I believe that pool playing match will be live streamed later on this season. Another team in the mixed division that I think people are looking at is Russia. Russia has the Pustovaya sisters, Dina Dumonskaya, and the likes of Toli Vasiliev, the Russian guy who plays in Canada at the highest levels in North American Ultimate. So that team probably very strong. Probably these four teams would be the likely favorites to make semis. And I'm just really excited for what we're going to see in Gior in the mixed division. It's going to be a really competitive one, I think. 
when earlier on this season I was thinking it's just going to be France and GB all the way, but Sweden and Russia are making some moves to be competitive as well. So now we're going to get things started off here in this second half. Krutz starting on defense. Let's see if they come out person to person or if they've taken our advice and tried to throw something a little junkier, a little zonier as Morier starts things off for France. Poppy Morier will be Delaval. Delaval gets it over to Paul Boyon. Boyon looking for Morier, but Chirnata is doing such a great job stopping him in that hammer space. And there's an overthrow from the French as the Drugs will get a first chance at a break here. And that disc is going to be too far from Kulin for Kulin's giving back the gift that's given to France. I really don't hate that look though because Kumans was in a load of space. It was just a little bit of an execution error from Golden. It was nice and flat and was thrown with spin. So I do think that if that happens again, Golden needs to be prepared to pick it up. There's a big D there from Kumans. Really good switching there from the men on the defensive line there from Krutz. So it's not a strict person-to-person -person defense. They are trying to switch, shut down options intelligently. Atez now with the disc on the doors on the attacking side, trying to get a break. Selena Skolton with a big blade to Kumans. The man with the least conventional flick puts it up for Lola Dam. Can she get it? She does, and Krutz get a break to start this half off 8-2 as the boys and girls in red start this half off strong. So I actually was about to say that coming out of the half, obviously not the best half, could. This now really works in their advantage, coming out on D after the half. We know that they are good athletically, but this also gives the opportunity to force some unconventional errors from the French. And the switching worked really well in that point. So. Krutz going to be feeling a bit more comfortable now coming out on defense, but France now looking to work it up with. We've seen fantastic throws from people like the likes of Bichon, Ancelin, many more, Chassignot. So I don't think they will be too phased by the fact that they've just been broken. They do have quite a luxurious cushion, so I don't think uh, spirits will be dampened at this point. Those players, Chassignot, Ancelon, Bichon, and players so far in this game. And uh, the O-line getting a little bit of a little, a little shake in there from the French team. Of course, they haven't played that many points this game, and maybe they're just not as fresh as they would like to be. We will see here as they work their way upwind, as you said. Last time they worked upwind, it was extremely easy for the French with a big put from Boyer as he looks to start things off. Centres it is to Monet. Looking to start things off from a split stack position as all three members of the camera side of the split stack try to make options open. France now outside their defending end zone and that disc is a little far and their Marcia Kulin is calling the disc out. Whereas the Kritz sideline, Niels Bohm calling it in, Marcia Kulin agreeing with her sideline. Very fair-minded here from Krutz's sideline. There's been a few in-out calls, and all the time they've said, no, actually, it was in. Great spirit from Krutz. And then a great grab from Anzo Fibi Sean. She's able to keep that one in bounds. Chirt Atez guarding Morier. And Morier looking for Monet. There's a pick called as that man was suspiciously free, as my commentator Benji likes to call, usually after a kind of pick like that. Marier, Grit doing a very good job of pressuring the handler resets right now. There's nothing easy given to the French at the moment. Let's see if they can keep that up as Steneker gets beat up the line. A big put from the French, but Lola Dam eats it up. And all of a sudden, it's a completely different game. Atez now with the disc. Finds Steneker. Big put for Dam. Can she get the bookends? It's trailing, it's there, and Dam has done it for Brooks. 8-3 as they get two in a row to start this half off. I can't help but think that this is the energy that Chris were looking for to go back into this game. Lola Dam getting positioning. I think in a way she may have baited it because the French um, cutter looks so free, but with the upward throw and the speed of Dam, the 
acceleration that she has, she kind of knew, I'm going to get here first, and then just goes the whole nine yards in the other, in the other direction. And I just can't help but feel that the ball has ever so slightly moved to its court. It's going to have to move in a big way. They are still down five points, which is a big hole against this French team. But they have managed to frazzle the French offensive line twice in a row. And you have to wonder, is the coach going to put those D-line players out now, as you do see the likes of Ancelon, Bichon, Chassignot. Sorry, I don't believe Chassignot is out of the field. But Le Pagnol, the players that have been making big plays on the D-line, coming out on offense here after getting broken twice. And that has to maybe cause a little bit of doubt in the mentality of these French players. Crit doing a great job defensively there. Like I said, pressuring the resets, baiting some deep throws upwind, doing everything they can. Still not working any type of zone. That's not Crit's way, but getting the Ds and getting breaks. We see now still many of those D-line players out. Boston De Jong now taking the field. Floor Kolarts joining the D-line. Yana Janssen as well. So we'll see if they can keep this pressure up or if France can keep their composure and get one in for the first time this half. Be shown now, marked by Boston de Lyon. Be shown sees nothing he likes upfield, and Atez doing a great job on handler defense on Ancelot. That is going to go huge, and Kumans gets the better of Le Pagnol. That's the first time we've seen Le Pagnol lose that kind of battle this game. Kumans getting huge for Kruitz. Friends starting to look a little bit rattled as the crowd are always going to support the underdogs. And it feels weird to call Kratz an underdog in this situation, but they really are. As we see the action, Lola Dam once again on the field, commanding this D-line of Kurtz. Kuman's now invigorated by his defensive play. He puts it, and that's going to be off the back of Antoine. Unfortunate there, as Kurt will give it up. Now, France with another chance for an offensive hold. Ancelon starting things off, marked by Atez. Atez did a great job completely shutting Ancelon down in the handler space up to that point. But now, oh, just an overthrow from the Pagnol. Antoine cannot hold on to it, so quick, we'll get another chance. That did look like a very good offensive possession there from the French. Just a bit of a missed throw into the end zone. Antoine getting the backwards D there on the replay. Atez now. Ancelon going to want to get the better of him as Atez has had the better of him on his defensive side. Take is being called downfield. Yeah, a bit of a clattering between Antoine and Bichon. I think Dam is going to be saying that she doesn't believe that they would have been within three meters as Dam was making her cut at the break sides and, B and, pardon me, Antoine was having to make up the cut on the open sides and you did have the space between the stack. So, not surprised that there's a bit more of a discussion in this call. I had my eyes on the disc and away from the cutters there, so I have no idea. Good job I was paying attention there, Ravi. <laughs> That's what you're here for now. Boston de Young takes the upline throw. And Bichon will call a bit of travel, or is he going to call him out? Uh, definite confusion and booze from the crowd. Absolutely not happy with that call, but it seems to be retracted. No hand signals, not very helpful for us. Hopefully something to think about when they're going into Euros. Atez trips up there, being marked by Ancelon, but Janssen saves things as Skolten goes deep for Flor Kulart. Can she make a play? She cannot. The pressure was just too strong there from Laura Chagno becker You don't often see Flor frazzled, but great stuff there from Chagno becker because I thought that was going to be a goal. I really actually thought the closest speed there from Chagno becker was so good. And I don't hate, as you say, I don't hate this option there from Selena Schultz. It was just a bit too bleedy. That's the kind of play we've seen Floor make time and time again. Ansela now with a big shot to Bichon. That one looks pretty. Can he track it down? He can. Loses his balance, but he was definitely not in the end zone when that went off. But he's going to dish it off to Le Pagnol, who gets the easy score. And France score for the first time this half 9-3. But have to be happy with that, though, as they forced a few turns. Still, France not able to score clean yet this half. 
France there making use of a quick turnover. We've seen it on the defensive points when they made the block, they pick up the disc and they move it quickly. Same goes for just a little bit of a mistake. There was blown coverage. Lamillon, been so good this game in the air, just goes deep and has two good defenders trailing him. And they kind of then end up in front of the end and then it's three on two as we'll see some highlights from that point. This is a great grab again from Jan and Janssen going full extension to claim that disc. And we'll see the huck from Scholten. You see there, Floor has the advantage and it even hits her in the hands. It was just the pressure that Chateau Becker could put on her to just frazzle her a little bit on that catch. Visibly frustrated there is Coulartz. And here, this throw from Alcelon to Bichon. What a rifle in this win, Sarah. And the catch, of course, equally as impressive. Yeah, you put everything behind it to catch that disc. Okay, Hrut now coming out on offense for the first time this half as they go for a side stack. Isolate Walt Janssen. Walt Janssen looks for Floor Coulartz. Can she make her first really big play this game? She catches it. Looks for Leninga. Doesn't like what she sees. Event finds Janssen, and that's an easy point, and that's the type of offense we're more used to seeing from Kurt. I was just about to say, this is a bit more characteristic of Kurt. A great downwind shot, and just patient in front of the end zone. This is the smoothest offensive point we've seen from Kurt. That's also good to instill a little bit of energy in them, just knowing that they can do this. Oh, no. So once again, Kurt's in prime position now to come out on defense. As we see here on the replay, Colat still elevating above two French players and just has Walt Janssen streaking deep into that left-hand corner. Not the cleanest looking end zone play there from Kurt, but every point counts the same. Eventually, Walt Janssen completely free and spaced. You see their crooks winning with their legs and their speed. So 9-4 the score now. Still the French in a bit of a lead, but Crook definitely a lot more alive in the second half than they were in the first half. Pretty reminiscent of that women's final we saw earlier, so Finland came back late. For them it was too little too late. We'll see if Crook can make a statement here but it's going to be tough against these great French players. That disc will sail out of bounds as Delevalle calls the brick. Do you think they have a lot more time than Finland did? Finland's comeback actually even started when the cap had gone on. So Kurt have plenty of time in this game. Games are slightly longer in the finals, 85 minutes, and it'll be cap plus one, regardless of what the score is, different to pool play that we have had here at Windmill. So France going into a split stack, cutting from the, usually having two players on one side, three players on the other. Cutting from the three-player side, that throw is going to be overthrown. And France just not looking as clean on offense. I mean, I have to give it to Crook. They're playing better defense. That there was just an execution error, though. Not looking as solid as they did in the first half. Kuman's now to pick up the disc. He had a throwing error earlier this game, but has also made some big defensive plays. Let's see what he can do now. He finds Atez for that little cheeky inside space. Atez looking for Skolten. Waves her off, eventually finds De Jong, and that's going to be overthrown. Monet now with the disc, gets it back to Delevalle. Chevalier dishes it around. Monet puts the disc up, and that's a huge defense from Nick Kumans. The second time he's come up defensively for this quick side. I'm not even sure Kumans even had a hand to that disc, but just the elevation spooked the French players. There's Pickle, but French player just completely bedazzled by the layout of Kumans and just wobbled the disc. So hopefully see it the replay. Yeah, doesn't doesn't actually get a hand on it, but just the French player there just doesn't have the focus at that time. Just completely distracted. Reminiscent a little bit of the D that Chagnyo Bakker got on floor, not really touching the disc, but being there. And in this wind, 
But now De Jong looks for Marcia Kulin. Can she read it? She can. Oh, but it's bobbled out of her hands. And that will not be a score. France now have another shot to go down the field. But I just want to stay in this win. Getting in the way of that disc, in the way of the vision of that disc, trying to make a DD can still be the difference because if you're trying to catch a disc in this fluttery wind and you're just a little distracted for a second, that can be the difference. And I think in those two plays, that was it. There, unfortunate. I thought Kulin read the deal disc perfectly, just couldn't get her hands around it. De Laval now starting things off for the French. Royon. Bastien Chevalier now. Looking for Moyer. Nice disc to Moyer. Atez was blocking all the easy shots, but they got the hard one anyways. Lachi now to De Laval. Chevalier gets the easy score to Pierre Alexandre Monet, the guy from Sesquiristus, scoring one for France. Score now 10 4. Crutch should not be disappointed with the D on that point. I just have to agree with what you said earlier. You made a good point, Ravi, about the French O line. It's not been the smoothest. I don't know if we've actually even seen the O line come out and have a faultless O point. If they did, it might have been right at the beginning, but in the second half, very jittery, a lot of miscommunications. Could have stepped it up, but France just need to have that little bit more focus. Their D line has been overpowering Krut. So now the O line needs to just take this point now off the pitch and discuss what are we going to do to make sure we have clean offense. That's the difficult thing to do, you know, when you're up in a game like they are. You have to still find out what you can improve on. They are not trying just to win Windmill this year. They are not even trying just to win Gior this year. They are trying to medal at WGC next year. That's the goal of this program. And you're right, they need to think about the fact that their O-line is not clicking. And I don't see the O-line huddling up on the sideline trying to make corrections, trying to trying to make adjustments. That's something they're going to need to do, but maybe they're going to have to take the time after this tournament to do that. As we see for the first time, France coming out in a bit of a 3-3-1 look, a bit of an arrowhead zone with Gael Ancelot in the front. So far, not really slowing down Krut, as Blasman has it, fakes the hammer. Gets it back to Van der Weyden. Janssen now on the sideline. We've got three male handlers for Krut, whereas there are two women uh, defenders in the front line, which means that there's going to be male-female mismatches downfield for Krut if they can't get a female handler back. Van der Weyden now to Janssen. Blossman finds Minard. I think that she's the exact type of player they need to get in that handler space to make something happen, as it looks like France is melting out of their zone or it's just at least poaching a lot as Ancelot's giving a lot of space to Laco Barnabas. And we hear a lot of screams from the French side, which I have to imagine means melt to person to person defense. They still haven't found their matchups yet as Bohm finds Van der Weyden almost to run through D there. Van der Weyden gets it to Janssen, and Janssen puts up the high release. It's tipped by Le Pagnol, who is making play after play today, Sarah. At this point, Lefagnol is MVP of the final. Heroic plays on D and massive skies on offense. France offense now looking a bit more stagnant. As Grau finds Ancelon. Ancelon looking for Lepagnol. We see the Janssen Lepagnol matchup again. Lepagnol fakes the huck. Can he find Ancelot off the line? That he opts for Gabriela. Finds Grau. A little bit of a bobble there from Manon Coigne. Grau finds Antoine, who's been so good in the cutting space for the French this game. Nice movement there, completely selling Lauco on the dump cuts is Grau. Ancelot now looking to sell Bohm. He gets the centering pass. Is there a continuation swing? He does find Kornia in the disc space. And she finds Chassigno as a female to female connection. Finishes it off for France to take a break here, 11 4. Very unfortunate here from Kurtz, given that their last offensive point was so smooth. 
but the French D-line, there are no words for the French D-line at this point. We've seen people like Lapignol. We've had amazing plays from the French women. Think about Chassignon, Ancelon, Bichon, Bryce Lazarus. Just once again, this just this intensity. Their, their O line may not be clicking, but their D line is working hard. And if you can keep that D line out for the rest of the game, then so be it. Don't let that O line back out on the pitch. That will be France's objective at this point. As Kurtz have taken another timeout in this mixed final. Another player I really. Looks for Walko van der Weiden up the line. Instead, finds Chirdoftes in the middle. Janssen now. And that's a hand block from the French defender. Did not expect that after a great offensive point there by Hrutz. Lachi with the block there, making up for the mistake from Ruffy, who essentially just threw it to Lola Dam. So, great D there from the... French O-line to get the disc back. Moirier now, guarded by Atez. Atez is taking a few meters off, really trying to prevent those breaks rather than get the hand block. Van der Weyden marking, and that's gonna be a great disc as Tiffany Lachi gets the bookends for her O-line and scores the points. Now 14-6, putting the French one point away, and you have to say, I would not expect Prutz to be able to get nine in a row here. Yeah, I think that's going to be a very, very big comeback, probably the comeback of all comebacks. But we know, we've talked about it time and time again, Ravi, this French DD line has just been the game changer for France. And Kurtz can't necessarily be going out with a huge amount of confidence knowing that they now have to go and get nine points in a row. If anyone was going to do it, it could be them. I just feel like nine points is very difficult so maybe I'll eat my words but I just think France has been so commanding throughout this entire game I can't help but feel that it's seemed to be game over we do see Le Pagnol coming off on this D-line point maybe France deciding we're going to put some of our second string D players here to get some more experience we do see the likes of Ancelin and Roblet out there as long with Céline Antoine I would hardly call them second I line. I don't think it's really second string. Okay, maybe just their top playmakers taking a bit of a break as Krutz. That disc landing inbounds. Niels Boom centers to Lako van der Weyden, who finds a big swing to Flor Coulards, who puts up a big huck to Stenecker. Can he get there? Can he track it down? He can. Finds Minard. Minard not liking that strike cut from Janssen. Instead finds Bohm. Ancelon poached off, leaving Janssen open deep in that end zone, but Bohm not able to find him. Great switching defense here by Hrut as van der Weyden beats Ancelon up on the open side. Puts up the scuba for Walt Janssen, and Hrut not over yet, 14-7 now. I really thought Gail Ancelon had a piece of that hook from four floor alerts that came out quite low, went full extension for the jump and just missed it. And it hit Stenecker right in the bread basket. So fantastic accuracy there from floor alerts. And Enzo from a little bit messy. The French were on their backs at every single given moment, trying to push them out the end zone. Has to require a slightly cheeky scuba there from Van der Weyden, looking for the top receiver, Janssen. So France now with the opportunity to finish the game. The O-line ready to show what they are made of here.
as we are wrapping up, maybe wrapping up, maybe we got a long game to go, but in case we're wrapping up, I would just like to give a little plug to my podcast, Eurozone. Me and Liam Grant had a bit of a prediction contest for this tournament. I do have to say, if France managed to win this one, I will have picked all the finalists correct and all the champions correct. So I'm feeling pretty good about my predictions here. I did predict France to win in this game. I did not think it was going to be this big of a difference, though. We'll see if Crutch will make me eat my words if they can manage to do the impossible and get eight in a row. It's going to start with this defensive drive. It's going to take France's O-line to finish things off for them because that D-line is not stepping out onto the field for the rest of this game. Unless, of course, they're going to start one on Owen and switch things up. But now, France starting things off as Anselphie Bichon puts up a disc. Chevalier. Chevalier looks to finish it up, and that's not in, called Prem by Kumans. Premature celebration there from the French. Gian Delaval looking for the dump cut. There's a big blade, and that's going to be it as Bastien Chevalier wins the game for France 15-7. What do you think about this game, sir? There are no words to describe the intensity that France flew out of the blocks on. The wind really picked up at the beginning of the game and Grud just did not know what to do. A 7-1 difference at the half, well, just before the half, just made it too far for them to come back. I do want to applaud Grud because they still came out with intensity. They didn't give up. They still had some huge plays, but France were just a cohesive unit the depth in this roster is so clear to see score in the second half 7-6 for the French so they do manage to come out on top though Crit playing much closer in the second half than in the first but the golden elephant the windmill trophy is gonna go down to France leaving the Netherlands for the first time in two years as Grits have won the last two windmills it did not become the hat trick for the kids from the Netherlands this will wrap up Windmill 2019, again, your champions this year. Great Britain in the Open Division, Germany in the Women's Division, and now France in the Women's, in the Mixed Division. Three national teams hoping to take this success into Dior. For Ulti.TV and Windmill 2019, I've been Ravi Vasudevan. I have been Sarah Sparks, and thank you for following the action at Windmill 2019.